Welcome back to the program. As we saw earlier, the banks uh, will be celebrating the fact their share prices have jumped today, uh, gaining tens of billions of dollars in market value, at least a reflection that, well, uh, certainly investors don't think there's any ongoing further damage to be done to the banks. But there are other parts of the financial system that certainly are deeply worried about their future, and none more so than mortgage brokers in particular. We spoke about this yesterday on the program. The Royal Commission uh, has recommended significant, sweeping changes to the way mortgage broking works, uh, in particular ending trailing commissions straight away, or at least in the next, uh, as soon as possible, in the next year most likely, uh, but then beyond that, uh, ultimately ending uh, commissions altogether from the lender, the bank, uh, or other lender, to the mortgage broker. Instead, the Royal Commissioner has suggested the lender, the, the person or the business who's seeking the loan, pay an upfront commission to the broker. Well, is that going to be a sustainable model? For the, uh, for the mortgage brokers. Joining me now, Mike Felton is the Chief Executive of Mortgage and Finance Association of Australia. Thanks very much for your time this afternoon, uh, Mike. Um, what do you make of what the Royal Commission has recommended, uh, firstly, for those mortgage brokers? Well, I think with uh, bank share prices moving up, I think the market's telling you that uh, this is a big win uh, for the banks. Not only will they have the customer paying the mortgage broker, but they potentially get a brand new multi-thousand dollar fee that a customer has to pay uh, every time they get a loan from the branch. Explain that to me. Why is that going to be the case? Well, um, the Commissioner put forward two models. One was a consumer fee-for-service and the other was a consumer fee-for-service along the Netherlands model. And that uh, relies on neutrality between the channels whereby in order not to undercut the broker, uh, the uh, branch has to charge the same fee. But that's going to be a fee to every customer going into the branch. And, and so if you don't use a broker and you just walk into your local bank branch and say, I want a loan, you would have to... This is the Netherlands model, isn't yeah, it? You correct. would have to pay the bank that fee of several thousand dollars. Correct. There's one difference. In the Netherlands, your interest, all your establishment costs and advice are tax deductible. Interest on your own occupier home loan. That is never going to happen in this market, which yeah. means the model doesn't work. You also have to have a situation where the lenders will not undercut the brokers, and we know that that's currently happening. And in fact, the way that branch fee was defined in the report is defining it at the marginal cost of the lender. With a large lender like CBA or one of the majors, that's going to be far below a broker cost, and essentially it's going to put the broker out of business. It will devastate the broker channel cut competition and access to credit and hand power back to the majors. There are two parts to this. Firstly, the Royal Commission's recommended getting rid of trailing commissions and the government's agreed to that. Is, do you have any problem with that? Look, uh, we would say that getting rid of trail is uh, at odds with the advice from both ASIC and Treasury. ASIC did not find it leading to poor outcomes. And in fact, Treasury in their submission to the Royal Commission said that uh, conflicts absent of a control mechanism such as trail um, would be even higher. Trail, a broker used to be paid up front and some time ago a decision was made to make some of that income contingent upon good outcomes. So now a broker only receives that trail over the line if the loan remains out of arrears, is not refinanced or does not involve fraud. In effect, it's aligning the interests. It's making sure that they are encouraged to provide a better outcome. We don't think it's a good idea to remove that control mechanism. But what, what is in the consumer's interest here? Why should a consumer pay an ongoing commission to a broker? Well, the consumer's not paying the ongoing commission to the broker. The lender pays an ongoing fee. But is that added, fee. To the, added to the loan for the well, consumer? They're ultimately the ones paying. No, evidence would suggest it's not. ASIC report found that brokers on average, uh, you know, um, array, arrange loans that are slightly cheaper than the proprietary channel. And in fact, banks have a pricing parity policy where the two channels generally compete on equal terms at similar prices. So it's a very efficient channel. And, and in fact, the Productivity Commission said that if you didn't have brokers, every lender would have to establish 118 branches to compensate for the loss of that shop front that they have through brokers. But the, the trailing commission will go because the government's agreed to that. Uh, so, you know, that, that's clear in the, the Treasurer's response. Yes. It's, it's the, it's the um, uh, standard commission, I suppose, that we're talking about here, where the government has not accepted the recommendation from Kenneth Hain. The government says it will further review this, but it wants to keep competition in place. Do you welcome that from the government? 
Um, I absolutely welcome uh, their response as being uh, more measured and realistic. Um, we differ on trial, but in terms of consumer fee-for-service, research shows that customers are not willing to pay. There is new research out that was released about a week ago that shows that 60% of customers would be willing to pay zero. And when you have a look at those that would be willing to pay the equivalent of a standard average up front, it is 3.5% of customers. If you are to introduce a consumer fee for service, it will devastate the channel. It will decimate the channel. And you'll end up with what? The big you'll end up, banks. You'll end up with very few brokers, if none at all. You will have competition reduced. Customers will have less access to consumers and credit. They will be forced back into the branches, handing power back to the majors, and it will become more difficult and more expensive to get a home loan. That is not a good customer outcome. That is... Um mortgage broking, finance broking, too opaque at the moment. Critics say, um, yes, under law, you meant to, a broker is meant to try and find a loan that a, a borrower can afford, but not necessarily the best loan for them. Look, it's hard. Uh, that best interest test, we, we agree that we need to go to a higher duty and uh, we agree to work with the regulators to implement that best interest duty. Uh, we're just going to have to define it to make sure it recognises that a broker has 2,500 products on their panel. It's very hard at any point in time to be absolutely up to speed with every interest rate and fee change at any point in time. But realistically, absolutely, a, a broker does act in their best interest and we have no issue with the legal duty to do so. And is there a way to give consumers more transparent information about the various commissions and how they work that brokers are receiving when they are suggesting a loan? David, our industry has been reforming for 18 months through the Combined Industry Forum. We've brought in a number of reforms, uh, voluntary, and got ahead of the system. We, in fact, started reforming six months before a Royal Commission was even called. Part of those are to increase the disclosure so that there is greater transparency and the customer can make an informed decision on their credit that they take. OK, coming back to the... Um the main recommendation from Kenneth Hayne that the government is not uh, accepting, and you, you welcome that. Labor, however, Bill Shorten, um, isn't siding with the government necessarily on this. He's still weighing this up clearly. Are you willing to make this an election issue to fight for the right of mortgage brokers to continue uh, to claim a commission from the lender? Mortgage brokers fight for the rights of their customers, and we would say that policymakers should prioritise customer interest over bank interests. Today, you've seen share, share prices of the majors go up for good reason. This is a huge win for banks and bank power. It is not a good outcome for consumers. We believe that we should be looking at competition and access to credit and making sure that we do not entrench bank power. Mike Felton, thank you very much for, thank you for uh, joining me. us this afternoon. That's Mike Felton from the Mortgage.